Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Andy Looney and Tom Ryan from Looney Labs looking at a prototype right now, mock-up of Chrono Trek, which is very familiar, I guess, if someone knows Chrono Knots. Yes, well, it's... They recognize the Absolutely, system. it is a familiar-looking setup for a Chrono Knots player, but a completely new and very exciting timeline based on the totality of Star Trek history. I am really excited about That's this. That's right. You know a bit about that. So, you've incorporated everything? I, I, well, not everything, but as much as I can cram into this this one incredible timeline. Yeah, uh, it's got everything from the original series up through Enterprise, and by everything I mean every time travel story. Okay. Because I focus in on all the time travel stories, of which there are quite a few in the history of Star Trek. Uh, so, I don't know how much of a Star Trek fan are you. Do you... Uh, super minimal. Okay, well, well... I know Chrononauts. I know in there you have a goal. Sure. We, we have some a timeline well, that we want to exist. Yes, yes. Each of us is a time traveler from a different alternate reality, and we're okay. trying to change history in key ways in order to allow us to create the reality that we think is correct and thus win the game. Mm -hmm. Now, one way it's different from original Chrononauts is that uh, I've mashed up... Room. In Chrononauts, there were ID cards and mission cards, and they were separate. Right. Here, I've, I've combined them all into one structure, so characters will have some timeline requirements as well as needing an artifact all kind of right on the same card. Okay. And there's a bit of a range. Some will focus more on timeline or some on character, I mean on, on artifacts depending. But yeah, there's a whole series of, of fun artifacts. And this is a mix of, this is not final art as you say, but it's getting there. This is, the timeline looks like the Elkar structure from, uh, from the computers in the next generation. And I'm, uh, the art I've got on all these is the art from the uh, earlier Star Trek games. Because, of course, this is now going to be our fourth Star Trek game. We had Star Trek and Star Trek Next Generation Flux. We brought those out last year. This year, we're bringing out the, um, the DS9 version. And that's at the printer right now. This is a prototype, but uh, any day now we'll be getting our first copies, and that goes on sale May 23rd. May 23rd, yep. Is that right? This is, uh, by the way, our new sales guy, Tom, Tom Ryan. We're mm -hmm. pretty excited to have him on board. I'm super excited to be here. I've been a big Flux fan for a long time, and it's been really, really cool getting to watch all of these games come to life. And now getting to share them with you guys, uh, as you'll be seeing them throughout uh, this year. May 23rd on Star Trek, and then Cronin Star Trek Chrononauts is going to be coming out uh, in August. Right. Okay. But so this this art is we're, we're we're using the same art that he did for the fluxes as the character illustrations for the characters in uh, Chrono Trek, and there'll be 32 different characters that you can be okay. in this game, and you can change history at all of these key points. Uh, let me just call out a couple of sort of classic favorites. Um, many people will remember the. Uh, the, the episode where Captain Picard, where Q shows Captain Picard what would have happened if he had lost, uh, if he hadn't gotten stabbed in this bar fight as a cadet. And so that's right here, Cadet Picard stabbed. If you flip that over and change that event, Cadet Picard avoids bar brawl, then you also flip ahead, Picard takes command, that becomes instead Junior Lieutenant Picard assigned to the Enterprise. Okay. And also, it ripples further forward. If Picard doesn't become captain, then he doesn't become Locutus. And so the Battle of Wolf 359 ends up becoming something else as well. And so you get to change the history at all these key points, like Edith Keeler, the Enterprise C showing up, uh, just all, the, all, all kinds of, of exciting Star Trek time travel stories I've managed to incorporate into this game, and I'm so excited about it. But I don't know, I have, we have other stuff to talk about, and I don't know how much time we, we, we have to spend on each one. Uh, how, where's the clock? Yeah. I feel like I, I, We're good. I, we have a lot of time. Yeah, I don't know. we do a couple more one minutes, maybe give examples here. So okay, no, okay. You'll have, you have a hand of cards. You'll have a hand of three cards. Yeah, well, let's take still a look a at bit. some of the cards. Well, I, I have a, a, a still fairly sorted deck. Um, one of the things that's fun about it is the the uh, the different ways of traveling through time in in regular chrononauts they're just called reverse fate um, but here they're all they're all a different way of traveling through time that we've seen in star trek so you've got well q snapping his fingers is a classic there's there's a couple of different time ships that have shown up the relative of the aeon 
Rasmussen's Time Pod. They're all purpose. Well, not all purpose. It happened uh, very specific one time. But this one, <laughs> this I was starting to think the all purpose temporal rift. That we we've seen a lot of different temporal right. rifts show up. The Atavacron early enterprise, uh, um, early uh, early series event. The slingshot effect. That's another sort of all purpose. We, they've used that a bunch of times. The Nazis built a temporal conduit in the, an Enterprise episode. Janeway stole the Chrono Deflector from the Klingons and used to travel through time. Daniels sent me. You have the tar tar Department of the Temporal Investigations could show up and ask questions. Um, the, the transporter malfunction I mentioned before has one of my favorite bits of techno babble on it. But there's a couple others which are actually... <laughs> I think uh, one of my favorite time travel artifacts in here is Data's head. Data's head. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, well, because I tried to have as many different way time travel stories referenced as possible. Uh, where is Data's head? I didn't head? see it in this one. Um, where is Data's head? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the mystery, there it is. right? Yeah, there it is. All, the whole episode. Data's fine. head, because um, it, it gets uh, lost in a cave for 500 years in San Francisco. I didn't have a way of putting that on the timeline, but it makes a great artifact. Okay. And some of these, so each of the artifacts is a different classification now, too. Some of them are life form artifacts, like the Tribbles. Yeah. Um, or the relic artifact, which is Data's head. Um, the uh, you got to have the humpbacked whales, of course, from uh, the, the the fourth movie. Um, there are technology artifacts like the agonizer, your agonizer, please. And then there's beverages. There's a whole series of beverages. <laughs> we got to have Earl Grey tea, hot. And and Romulan ale. And Romulan ale. Prune juice is a warrior's drink. And there's a whole sort of series about these. And then, and that's like different characters will need those. Like Worf wants the, the prune juice. Picard needs to have the Earl Grey tea. And um, Guinan just needs any two beverages because, you know, she's the bartender. Okay. This is like a whole history, uh, a fake history lesson. I, I've, I've, this I've, is very this, real Star Trek history. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I have gone d so deep on my Star Trek expertise here because I mean I've been a lifelong Star Trek fan, so it's been a joy to do so. But I, I went back and watched every original Trek episode about every every uh, from every series that was about time travel right. to really bone up on this. Um, Let's look at another another timeline one. One okay. of my favorites we'll is is do the, uh, oh Devron the Devron anomaly. Yeah, well that's, that's something that's not in. That's a good point. In the um, in, in the original Chrononauts, you have two kinds of cards: linchpins that that are a moment in time that can be changed, and then ripple points that change as well. But here, there's a third one. The the last episode of the the Next Generation sees a anti-time eruption causing this temporal anomaly that stretches backwards in time and grows bigger as it moves backwards in time. And so we've got that represented here. The last event on the timeline is where the temporal anomaly has not yet begun. But every time one of these events come up, this is a new kind of card, kind of like a creeper in its functionality in, right. in, uh, from Flux. When you get one of these, you have to do what it says and, and, draw, and then continue with your turn. So when these come up, a lot of them will be for the Devron anomaly. So when this flips, the anti-time eruption begins. The next time you get one of these, and there's five of them in the deck, the next time you get one, it'll ripple to there. And this will sort of move the, the anomaly backwards in time, slicing across the timeline, first being encountered there, getting bigger there, the Mars colony in 2103, Still being established, but at this point the anomaly is huge. If and finally, if it gets all the way to the end, then it causes life on Earth to not happen, and the game ends without a winner. Okay. Unless you're Q, That's because my Q wins <laughs> by doing that. <laughs> and there's a there's then another thing that, and this was a last minute addition to the of the game. That's one of my favorite like final little uh -huh. tweaks, is that there's something called invitation to join the queue, where you then win if this happens and there's no queue. Okay. So anyone can sort of try to bring about the end of humanity through to time win. travel. For victory. To win. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. So oh. there's a little bit more about it. Should we move on now or should yeah, I keep should. talking well, more? Because there's still so much in this game I could talk about. Thank you very much, Andy. Because I didn't oh. even talk about fractures. There's a whole thing it's called not. fractures. But, you know.
That's right. You'll get to experience them. A lot of time yourself. travel weirdness. There's 11 different ways that, that, that things could go bad that are on fractures. They're all spelled <laughs> out on this fracture key. That's all part of it. This is coming again August 1st if we can get everything done in time. There's still a lot of art to finish up. All right. Chrono Trek. There you go. Andy takes us out. Thank you very much for the overview. You're very welcome.